All right, let me mute some folks. Okay, Zoe, that is so sweet. I love that. I'm coming over to secure. Wow. Look at that unicorn and rainbow. You're very good at unicorns. Oh, okay, guys. Um, if you want me to send a link to the extra enrichment videos um, for art, then I will just go ahead and um, send you that while you are learning today. I'm coming over to Hector. Whoa. Hector. What? Hold on. I'm unmuting you. I'm unmuting you. Here we go. Buddy, that is amazing. Did you trace that or freehand? Um, I I did it with my dad. I, I was the one who thought of it and I drew it, but he was helping me with some of the lines. Oh my gosh. You know what, Hector? I have this memory of, do you remember our old building when you were in the first grade? In, mm -hmm. I believe you were in NDSU. Um, and uh, you, we were working on our molas, I think, and you decided that you wanted to make yours like really kind of scary, creepy, edgy, you know? Mm -hmm. And I was like, oh my gosh, Hector is so cool. He's got this like, he's already got this really unique, edgy, artistic style to him. And I can see now that that's only grown since I've, you know, since you've been in first grade. Keep it up, buddy. Coming over to Maymor. Wait, where'd you go? There you are. I keep trying to spotlight you. I won't spotlight you. All right, well, Maymor, just hold it up for now, okay? Oh, there it is. What's this? It's a book that I made that, uh, it was a book that I made from when I was home alone during a break of school. And it was my mom's idea, so she told me to write a book. I'm not quite finished with it, but I'm wow. still. Well, I really love that your mom is pushing you to explore art and writing at the same time. Uh, before we look at anybody else's art, I just have a quick announcement, guys. So um, eyes on the screen for a second. A bunch of second graders are joining us today so, um, because they feel like they're third grade ready. So I'm counting on you guys to be like your amazing selves so that they can see like this is how awesome third grade is because you are. So Ms. Jones, if you see any second graders, clearly you don't need to take their attendance. Um, they're just here to hang out. And we're happy you guys are here joining us. So let's look at a couple cool. more Thank works you. of art. Zoe Stanley. Wow. Awesome. That's so pretty, Zoe. Thank you. You're welcome. It's my royal high, my royal high character. That's cool. Evelise. Oh my goodness. Look at the multiple shades of green that she used in the leaves. It makes them look so vibrant and realistic. I used oil pastel because my dad got it for me. I knew it. I knew that was oil pastel. That's gorgeous. Oil pastel is my favorite. Um, and oh, I see some of my second graders. Hey, guys. All right. So I want to see more of your art, but we also need to start our lesson. Michael, hold on. Keep it up. <gasps> wow, you guys are like really into yeah. anime. This is like Dragon Ball Z. Yeah. I it on my own. You can ask our mommy. He likes it a lot. Okay, I'm sure he answer. does, and so do I. Really great job, Michelle. All right, guys. So I just want to spend an entire day looking at your art, but we also need to learn something new too. So let's get started on that. Today, we're going to be talking about different ways to add value. Um, I've taught you about value before, right? So let's kind of review what we know about it. I'm gonna share this screen with you. So uh, as you can see, there's a ball, right? And it's been shaded all the way around it to provide value. So what are the three parts of value again? 
January, would you want to maybe read that aloud? What are the three parts of value? Oh, I oh, there he is. The three parts of value are highlights, midtones, and shadows. Excellent job. January, do you remember which one of those is the darkest? The um, shadows. The shadows, right? Just like that super villain Bane. He lives in the shadows and he is all about darkness. Um, which one is, Michelle, which one of these is the lightest part of the drawing? I think where the, I think the highlight, and I think that there's like, I think yes. that, I think that there's like light pointing right towards it, that's what's making it light, and then on the bottom, it's dark, so that's what's making the shadow. Brilliant. So yeah, the shadows are the darkest, the highlights are the lightest part. So Madison Camargo, what would be the, um, the middle? The middle one would be mint tones. Absolutely. So, um, all right, I'm gonna have to disable um, your annotation. Unfortunately, guys, let's not write on the slideshows, please. So highlights, shadows, and mid tones, the lightest, the darkest, and the most medium parts of your drawing. So far we've talked about how to create it with paint or how to create it with oil pastel, okay? Today we're going to talk about what it's like to sketch. And by sketch, I just mean draw a picture quickly without adding too much perfect detail, okay? There's a lot of different ways to create value while you're sketching. This is one of my favorite parts of art, just opening up a sketchbook and filling it in with a uh, drawing and then adding these different lines to show depth and value. Let's take a look at what I mean. There's a lot of different ways to create value, okay? Stippling, gumbling, shading, smudging, cross-hatching. Now, you guys have done some of this before. Do you guys remember anything on this list that you may have done before? You can go ahead and raise your hand. If you remember something here that you have done before, raise your hand. Three participants raise their hands. Carolyn. Carolyn, what have we done before that you see on this list? Ivelisse, go ahead. Carolyn, are you there? Huh. All right, I'll come back. Noelani, what have we used before? Noelani, what is going on? Hmm. Well, let me look at the chat. Kyer says we've used shading before. So does Aisha, and you are absolutely right. We have definitely used shading before. Is there any other kinds that we've used before that you guys can think of? Brandon? Brendan Crumbo, what do you got, bud? Can you say it again? Can you say it one more time? Yes, we've definitely used smudging. There's a lot of different techniques that we've used before. So now I have a drawing that I did of an eye. Okay. Um, I'm not sure why these little like symbols are here, somebody put them there. Um, I don't know if it's possible for you guys to remove it, but it would be really helpful if you could because um, it's a little distracting and it's gonna give people the, the wrong impression, okay? So if you did the check mark, the arrow or the star, you're not in trouble, but I really would love you to remove it because if you can, because I, um, I don't want anybody to be misled, okay? So take a look at this picture I drew of an eye. Okay, it's in three sections and it's labeled one, two, three. I did three different value techniques. Who can chat to me and tell me um, which value technique did I use for section one? Chat me and tell me what value technique did I use for section one? You can just chat it to me now.
section one, what did I use? A lot of people have sent me a response, but I haven't gotten the right answer yet. Take a really close look at section one. Take a really close look at the lines. Thanks, Maymore. Look at the lines and look at the way that they're drawn. Which technique is that? I still haven't gotten the right answer. Yes, Nomar. Nomar gave me the right answer. So did JL and Kyer. Awesome. So guys, the answer is scumbling, okay? How can you tell? I'm gonna look for JL. Um, JL, how can you tell that I used scumbling for the first section? I can tell that she used scumbling for the first section because when you when when I looked at section one, I saw that scumbling was like little loop circles. Mm -hmm. And when I look at the first part of the eye, I see tiny little thin circles that look exactly like scumbling. Yes. Excellent job, JL. And um Brand, Kair, Aisha, uh, I believe, um, Nomar, uh, the people who said scumbling, you are absolutely correct. But what about section two? What value technique did I use? Brandon, you can just chat it to me, honey. What value technique did I use for section two? Hey, Kofi, welcome. Wow, Nomar is correct again, so is JL. So is Brandon. Mrs. Can you make Miss A a co-host? Can you get a chance? So is Kair, Noelani, Aisha, Peyton, more commonly known as Superman, hashtag strongest dude. Very good, Peyton, Superman, hashtag strongest dude. Way to go, buddy. Um, Owen, smiley face, crown, alien, ship, cool. You're right, Owen, crown, alien, spaceship, cool. Very good. Madison Camargo, almost, almost. Don't leave. Okay, so let me find someone. Uh, Owen, I'm gonna look for Owen, and Owen, I would love for you to explain why. What is this noise? I would love for you, Owen, to explain um, why you got that answer. What did you say, first of all? I saw that there was a lot of dots, so I knew it had to be um, stippling. Stippling. Because, because it was like, um, it was not bright. It was not like, um, it was not dark. Mm -hmm. So and I knew. Go ahead. So I knew it had to be um, stippling. Stippling. Everybody say stippling. Stippling. Excellent job, Owen. So Owen said that he saw all those dots and he knew it had to be stippling. That's how you know it's stippling when you see all the dots. This is how you know it's scumbling when you see the little itty bitty loops. But what about section three? Chat me right now and tell me. Wow, Nomar? Amazing. Nomar has gotten every single answer correct. Um, so go ahead and chat me what you think the answer is. Way to go, JL, that's right. And Superman hashtag strongest dude Peyton is also correct. So is hashtag Kyer and Nathan and Miss Secure. Oh, Secure, that's close. Braden is correct. Madison and Egypt are correct. So, um, Let's see, Madison, do you want to tell us what you wrote in the chat? I wrote crossaging because I saw that there was a lot of lines and there were, and in crossaging you write a lot of lines and then they're all mixed together. So they look like a lot of lines. Right, okay. So cross hatching is when you do, you cross the lines over each other in order to make it look darker, okay? So these are, 
all different ways in which we can create value. And we, as we know, value is a great way to make your art look so much more realistic, right? And that's what we want as artists, as long as you don't want to be abstract. So let's get started. Let's make our own work and practice these techniques. And here's how we're going to do that, okay? Everybody take your paper and hold it the hamburger way. Um, Ms. Beauchene, sorry to cut you off. Can you just make Miss A a co-host really quickly? It's for some reason, I wasn't able to do so. Yeah, of course. Thanks. Don't worry, Miss A. We're coming for you. There we go. Yay! Welcome. <laughs> sorry for the delay. Um, I'm really excited, by the way, of all these second graders that are in here. Did you hear that they were able to join you guys? I'm so thrilled. And Miss A, you know that each of them has answered my questions correctly? Yeah, Kofi's here, Nomar's here, Nathan's here. Like, I Nathan's heard here. Nomar answering. Loretta, Mustafa, Charlene, Egypt, like Emily, Aiden. Whoa, I can't even keep track of how many are in here. They just want to be, you know, in the third grade, and I, it seems like they're ready. Absolutely. I'm excited. So guys, everybody's going to be holding their paper the hamburger way. Do me a favor and hold it up to the screen. Hamburger way. It's like you've got both hands on it. Take a big bite, except don't eat paper. I'm sure it doesn't have the nutrients that we're looking for. So hold your paper the hamburger way. And then um, Aisha, <laughs> Aisha, do not eat that paper, young lady. All right. so. We're going to hold our paper this way and we're going to fold it a certain way too, okay? So this one, it's not going to be as tricky as our last folding assignment when we had our zines, so don't worry. This one's not hard. We're just going to fold it into thirds and we're going to do it slowly and you can watch me do it right now. So here's how we're going to do that. Keep your eyes on the screen. Here's my piece of paper. It's really little. You, yours can be big or small. It doesn't matter. I just wanted mine to fit on the camera, so here we go. I'm holding it. Now, I'm gonna fold it into thirds. So, I'm gonna take one side and pull it over. And when I see that once I've folded it over, it's about the same space as the space that's left, then I can push down. And then the other side, I can just fold that over. So basically, you just want one piece of paper that's folded into three sections. And watch how I slowly show you how to do that one more time, ready? I'm gonna take the side and fold it over. That way, there's the same, it's at the same size as what's left over. That's how I know that the last one will be the same size as the others. And when I'm done, I have a piece of paper that's folded into three equal sides. That's right, Nomar. Oh, thanks, Nomar. Um, so, let me do it again. Someone just asked me to do it again. Ready? I'm going to take one side and I'm going to fold it over, but I'm going to stop when there's this leftover that's the same size. Same size. You can measure it with your fingers. Yes. So then I'll fold over the other side and then I'll have three different sections. It's not that important that they're exactly the same size. It really just matters more that you have three sections on your drawing. After you have folded it, go ahead, give me a thumbs up. Owen is there. David is there. Looking at all these people that are there and it's folded. Yeah. Okay, scholars who are in the second grade, absolutely you should be doing this too. Of course, feel free. So someone just asked me to do it again, so pay close attention. Here I have just a regular old hamburger style piece of paper. I'm going to take the side and I'm going to fold it in, making sure I leave behind the same amount of space that I just folded. And then I can take that side and fold it over. Okay, now remember, it doesn't matter if it's not perfectly the same size. All that matters is that we have three different sections. So now I need someone to tell me, what should we draw? What should we be drawing a picture of? Who has a good idea of something that's simple that we can draw? You can chat it to me if you want. Yeah, Nathan, it does kind of look like a map. We could do an eye if you want to do an eye. A heart. 
star, unicorn fish, another heart. We're gonna keep it super simple. Some of, some of you guys are sending me some ideas that are a little complex, which I love because you always wanna push yourself, but let's keep it simple because today's really just about, um, you know, different value techniques. So here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna stick with fish. I really like that one. So watch how I do this. I'm gonna fill this paper from side to side with a drawing of a fish. I'll take up two thirds to make the body by creating a pointy oval, an oval with a point at the end, okay? And to make that, it's basically just a frowny face. And then underneath it, it's like a smiley face. And then I can just use a sort of triangle shape for the tail. Notice how I filled up the whole paper from side to side. Okay, so from one side to the other, I just put in an entire fish, okay? All right, so go ahead and do that now. So again, this is just like an oval with a triangle on the side. Remember, if you ever feel like you can't really draw something, you can just break it down into shapes. Everything in the world that can be drawn is made of shapes. All right, Mustafa finished drawing his fish. Nomar finished drawing his fish. I'm scanning the room. It looks like most of us have drawn it. Oh, Sakir and JL are holding it up. I love that. I love being able to see it. Okay, guys. So let's talk about value. Which of these value techniques do you think I should use for the first section of my fish? You can chat it to me now. Which of these techniques do you think I should use to fill in with value? It's okay, Carolyn, you can do it. Just try your best, honey. JL says I should do cross hatching. That's the first one I heard. So that's what I'm gonna do, okay? Um, I'm gonna do cross hatching. So take a look. I only want one value technique for one section. I'll start with the tail. JL said I should do cross hatching. Great idea. So here's how I'll do that. In order to do cross hatching, you need to start by making a bunch of lines that go in the same direction over and over. Look how I'm making sure that there's about the same amount of space in between each line, okay? So I'm just going ahead and making little lines that are the same distance apart. Now, that's called hatching, okay? But we want to do cross hatching. So what I'll need to do is go over it the other way. I just went like this. So now I'm going to make lines that go the opposite way. Okay, and then I can fill in this section with a little more cross hatching. But just like in real life, I want some parts of this to be darker. Michelle, you can absolutely do this, I promise. You can do it. Michelle, send me a chat and tell me what you're struggling with, the fish, the folding, or the cross hatching. So watch how I'm gonna make part of this darker. I'm going to go in between the spaces and I'm going to add just an extra line. That's going to make it so that the bottom of my tail is much darker than the rest of the fish. So again, I'm going over these lines again so that the bottom of my tail is a lot darker, okay? 
quote, this is darker than this up here. And that's because I added extra lines. Oh, Michelle, if you're worried about the folding, just don't even fold the paper. It's totally fine if you don't want to fold the paper. You can just draw the fish and then do different shading techniques. The folding was just there to help you create guidelines. It's not mandatory. You don't have to do it. So again, I'm just going back and forth between the two directions of lines. And this is going to make some parts of the tail darker. Okay, and that's gonna make it look a little more real. Okay, so scholars who are chatting me, I need help. You need to be explicit. So you need to tell me I need help with this, okay? I'm gonna stop the screen share for a second because I'd like to see anybody who's done some cross hatching, hold it up so I can see. Coming over to Kofi. Very good, Kofi. I would totally fill it up with lines. How's it going to here? Okay, very good. Very good. Looking for some more screens. Deanna, how are you doing over there? Very nice, Deanna. Excellent job with your cross hatching. Um, JL. Excellent job, JL. Very good. Um, I'm coming over to Brayden. Awesome. Now, Brayden, now draw lines in the opposite direction, like you're making little X's. Okay. I'm coming over to Christian. Excellent job, Christian. That's exactly it. Coming over to Aisha. Very good. Now make lines in the opposite direction. Remember, it's called cross hatching, so there needs to be crossing in a different direction. Good job, Nathan. Okay, let's go back to the technique screen. What technique should we use? Nadia, it does not look terrible, honey. We're just trying something new. This is not something for you to feel self-conscious about, okay? You're doing great, I promise you. So what kind of shading technique should I use for part two? or the middle of my drawing. Chat it to me now if you have an idea of what you think we should do. A lot of people are saying shading. So here's what we're gonna do. Yeah, I'm getting a lot of people saying shading. Um, so for shading, Here's what I can do. Now, shading is kind of like cross hatching, but I'm not making like X's over each other to create value. What I'm doing for shading is just the same line over and over again. I'm gonna follow the lines of this fish, the curve of its tummy. I'm gonna follow that curvy line and repeat it over and over again. Only, watch what I do here. I'm gonna make the line over and over again in some areas. That way this will be lighter and this will be darker. So I'm just gonna follow the lines of this fish. It's curvy. So I'm just gonna make that line with a curve over and over and over again from top to bottom. After I do that, I'm gonna do it again, but only halfway. Notice how I'm not going across the whole fish. Just about halfway. This will make sure that the fish is darker over by the tail. So again, I'm not cross hatching. I'm not going over these lines in the opposite direction. I'm going in the same direction the whole time. While you guys um, 
don't have art again for another week. I would really love to see you guys practice these um, smudging techniques. I'm sorry, these um, value techniques with like smudging or um, shading, scumbling, stippling, cross hatching. Try it out and see uh, how it goes. All right, I'm getting some chats, so let's see what this says. I definitely want to see um, how these are coming out, Nomar, so don't even worry, because I'm going to be asking. Mm-hmm. That's right, Brandon. So Brandon's just chatting me, and he's saying, up, down, up, down, up, down, and that's exactly what I want you to do. Does anybody have the shading done and they'd be willing to share? Hey, Egypt. Beautiful. Coming over to JL. Wow. Awesome. Awesome. JL, that is fantastic. Um, coming over to Nomar. Excellent, Nomar. Way to follow the lines of that fish, buddy making it darker by the base of the tail. Um, coming over to Nathan. Excellent. Very, very good, Nathan. Um, Mishael. Excellent. Excellent job, Mishael. Um, Miss Secure. Beautiful shading. Look here. Do you see how realistic that looks now? Do you see how real it looks because of the shading? Oh my gosh. Excellent job. I'm coming over to David. Excellent job, David. Coming over to Brayden. Beautiful, Brayden. Don't you shake your head, mister. That is a beautiful fish. Beautiful shading. Excellent job, Christian. You are really picking up on this. Um, coming over to Loretta. Wow. I love how angular that fish is. Coming over to Felix. Beautiful Felix. Coming over to Kofi. Excellent Kofi. And Owen. Thanks for the smile, Michelle. Oh, and gorgeous. That's exactly it. Well done, Deanna. Very good. Well done, Mustafa. Excellent. So there's one more we have to pick. So chat me which is the last one that you want to try. Just go ahead and send it in the chat. Yeah, so I'm getting a lot of um, stippling. So let's watch this. Let's watch how we can do stippling. Okay, so I'm gonna get sort of a bigger marker because stippling is just making dots and the tip of this marker is so much bigger than the tip of this pen. So I'll be sure to cover more area with the tip of the marker. So for stippling, Watch how I'm just going to fill this in with dots. But the trick is I need to be able to add value. So I need to take these dots and make some part of my fish darker. And I think that should be around the eye to really highlight the eye area. So I'm gonna put extra dots around the eye and stipple it so that it really stands out. Maybe even like go around the eye again. Really make that eyeball stand out. And add some more stippling around it to really get like a mid-tone in there. I can also add more stippling. 
by the smile. Make sure that we can really see that part. Just dots and dots over and over and over again. So when you are ready to show how the stippling has come out, you can just hold it up. Go ahead, Mustafa, you can go if you want. Kofi, you can chat it to me. Let's see how the stippling is coming out. What do you think, Superman? Hashtag strong. Strongest dude, parentheses, Peyton. Do you want to show the fish? Come on, Superman, hashtag strongest dude, parentheses, Peyton. Are you sure? All right. All right. What about JL? Excellent. Very good, JL. All right, Mustafa. Excellent job. Uh, Michael? Yeah, I'm going to say 100%. That is perfect. I'm not sure, Adonis, but I can ask your teacher. Oh, wow, Felix. Oh my gosh, look at that. Excellent job with these varying techniques, Felix. I love it. Um, Miss Secure. Beautiful. Okay, so. We're sort of running out of time, so here's what we're gonna do. A lot of you had also mentioned that you wanted to do smudging. So let's close class with a little bit of a smudging example. But here's the thing, if you're gonna do smudging, you need a pencil. So this is only gonna work if you have a pencil. For smudging, I'm just gonna go back and forth in the same direction. Back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. I'm gonna follow the line of the fish. So I'm not going too far away from the fish. I'm just putting some shading underneath the fish. And then I can take my finger and rub it until the lines disappear and it just becomes shade. So I'm just rubbing my finger where I put the pencil lines and the oils on your finger are going to help the graphite of the pencil blend together. And now he kind of looks like he's popping up off the picture, right? That's smudging. Who can tell me what the three techniques we use today are? And I'll hold this up so that you can see. Who can tell me just one of the techniques that we used today? You can chat it too if you don't want to raise your hand. Yeah, Ariane, it does look like it has a shadow. When I add um, smudging, it, it definitely looks like a shadow. Who can tell me what are the techniques that we use today? Kofi is right, we used cross hatching. And then what did we use? After we used cross hatching, what did we use after that? Who can tell me what we used after we used cross hatching? Madison is right, at the bottom I used smudging. Kofi's right again, I used stippling. We did something else in the middle. We used shading, that's right, very good. Unfortunately, that's our time for today, but remember, you gotta stay here, okay? Um, Ms. Royer was very clear about those expectations, you gotta stay here. But um, while we're in this last minute to say bye, I just wanna remind you how much I love you and how excited I am for your test coming up. And I just want to remind you guys, um, I remember going to the cafeteria on a day of a big test and saying, hey guys, are you ready for the test today? And you were like, nope, no way. And I was like, but you got this, I promise. And you were like, no. And then you came to art class and I was like, how was the test? And you were like, it was great. We did great. And it's like, yeah, of course you did. You guys are 
crazy smart and so talented and bright and creative and you're going to do great if you feel nervous that's normal but what's also normal is understanding that once that test is happening you know this stuff i promise you got this and i can't wait to hear how it goes and more importantly i can't wait to give you a big hug when we're back in the building together and celebrate how great you did all right i love you guys and if you ever want to share art or anything or if you need a pep talk whatever you need you message me on jupiter okay i will always be here I'm going to make Miss Royer the host. Hostess Thanks with the host. Thanks, Miss Oshane. Always. You know how much I love this class. Bye, Miss Hernandez. It's so good to see you, too. You guys are going to do great. I love you so much, and we'll talk soon. Hey, you are staying.